The moral of the story is love your library, love your librarians. If you ask, you will receive. Hi, welcome to my channel. I'm Jane from Twofold Books, and I usually have more than one perspective or answer. And today I have some perspectives on anthologies. I'm looking at my library loot. Maybe you're here for the African author challenge. Or maybe this is your first time to my African Author Challenge content. If so, since I've moved, I won't be able to have my bookshelves up for quite a while. And so the books on the stairs are what we've got. Down here, this is the books that I let my sock drawer pick for me to not pack. And if you watched that video, you can see that's many fewer than we actually picked i i just couldn't put that many books in my suitcase in the end especially when there's so much digital content available and then up here is all of the books that i got from the library last week so let me tell you about my adventure with the library it was great this all comes from me continuing to work on the African Author Challenge where I am trying to read a book by an author from every country in Africa this year. I'm seriously behind, but that's kind of who I am as a person, and I tend to catch up in the end. Like, if I set a goal, I'm going to be finishing it, and I'm going to be finishing it the last minute. So I have a clearer plan now and I'm feeling better about myself and the world and my reading and I'm not worried. I'm not worried. I hope you're not worried. It's okay if you're worried. Moving on. After deciding that this is going to be my reading direction and my project this year, phase one of searching for African books was sharing this desire on the internet. So I posted on Facebook to my communities to see if anybody had any suggestions, and I got two good hits. One was a community member who suggested Bessie Head, who is someone I had at that point already heard of, but it was just nice to get a signal boost from that person. And the second was someone linking a blog or a reading list someone else had done. I'll find that and share that below. Where someone did this project for every country in the world. I don't know if they did it over the course of a year. I can't remember. But I loved that and that was my starting point. I took that person's list and plugged it into the African countries alphabetically and started looking at the two libraries I was mostly going to be sourcing my books from to see if they had those books, just those books. That was phase one and I needed a lot of books after phase one. There were a lot of countries that I couldn't get covered. The next thing I did was to look in the library system myself to see if I could search for the country. And I immediately ran into this problem where if you put in the keyword Africa, that's just opening a huge can of worms because there's so much academic and uh, explorer literature that's not really written by African authors. I couldn't figure out how in the advanced search settings to search for authors by nationality. Like again, Africa's not even getting us there, but if I just put in Angola or Somalia or Ethiopia, I'm not necessarily going to get books by Ethiopian authors and that's a lot to cull through. So I kind of stopped searching at that point and just was working on here are the books I can read while I'm still in this state, in this place, using this library system, and then I'll try again after I knew this move was coming. So now I'm in a different state, different library system. So that's what happened. Then last week, I landed here at home and took a walk to my old haunt, my old library. Just popped in, they were still doing pickup, so it was sort of a conversation through masks through the door, and let the librarians know what was going on and asked if they could help. They took my email and address and later that day I got a response from a librarian who said there's a database and also start here with a Wikipedia list of African authors. After that help, I shared my master list to the librarian and I started adding all the authors I could find from the Wikipedia source. It was, it was pretty helpful. 
Sort of. I think I'll go more in depth at that and do some screenshots in another video that's maybe like a wrap up at the end of the year. But it was sort of helpful. Definitely got me a lot further. Like um, I'm not even through looking at all the countries and, and I found another seven or eight pretty quickly. So after I shared that information with the librarian, she also let me know that she can ILL books for me, meaning interlibrary loan from other library systems. So if we get to a point where there's like 15 at the end that we just can't find in the Louisiana system, she can get them for me from other states. And she was just so generous and thoughtful and amazing to do that. And then because I shared with her my master list, she just picked these 10 for me. She just picked them and said, they're on hold. You'll get an email when they're at the library and you can come pick them up, which I did, which was very exciting. The moral of the story is love your library, love your librarians. If you ask, you will receive. And I, I invite you to ask. I have been having trouble finding these books and I think that that's on all of us. I think that our libraries have what we want and if we're not wanting these books from other countries, this is true of all the countries, but in particular countries in the Southern Hemisphere, if we're not asking for these books, they're not going to have them. If we're not asking publishers to translate them, they're not going to translate them. So join me, go ask your librarian for some African literature. Let me just quickly go over a little bit about these books. I don't know very much about them. I like going into my books with very little information, but I do know the name of the book and the name of the author and their country. This first one is The Healing Wisdom of Africa um, by a Burkhanabi writer named Maladoma Patrice Somme. Through the healing wisdom of Africa, readers can come to understand that the life of indigenous and traditional people is a paradigm for an intimate relationship with the natural world that both surrounds us and is within us. This acclaimed book is the most distinctive and complete study of the role ritual plays in the lives of African people and the role it can play in Seekers for the West. So I think the author is, um, is a practitioner of some of these rituals that are in the book. Next we have When Rain Clouds Gather, which is my cheat book. So there are a lot of countries from Africa that I have read literature from and I was intentionally choosing not to read an author from that country that I've already read. But Bessie Head's my cheat because I read one book by Bessie Head only last year and I just fell in love with it and it was that book was called A Question of Power and I really want to read something else of hers. So I'm gonna do Bessie Head. She is a Botswana writer. And well, I am counting for Botswana and that's um, a subject of discussion, but we'll get to that in a minute. By Night the Mountain Burns by Juan Thomas of Avila Laurel is uh, by an Equatoguinean author from Equatorial Guinea. Uh, this looks like a really exciting novel. I think this was published rather recently, which I like being able to read fairly contemporary work. This one's from 2008. It's also pretty small. I feel lucky every time I come across one of these that's like a really digestible size. I know there's like a couple even smaller ones in here. Transparent City by Onjaki is Angolian and this book also had a lot of hype about it. The translation was only from 2018 so you might have even seen it floating around the internet but it was originally published in Portuguese in 2012. The Sexual Life of an Islamist in Paris is by Lila Moraine. I hope I got that one right. That's a lot of owls. So she's Algerian and this one definitely is interesting to me. I had this, this feeling with another one of these African project books that I DNF'd earlier in the year that I guess it's okay to read a book from an author's experience somewhere else in the world, but I was kind of really hoping to learn about Algeria 
I know about Paris. That'll be really interesting to feel. Does this give me the, the anchor, the landmark I'm looking for to learn about geography and geology as well as literature and writers? The Q is by an Egyptian writer, Basma Abdel Aziz. The back of the book says almost nothing about it, which is fine by me, I guess. I'm not quickly finding the publication date. 2013 originally and 2016 in English. The United States of Africa is by a Djiboutian author named Abdurrahman Waberi. Uh, this is pretty skinny, I'm excited, but it does look like it was translated from French, which I find books translated from French can be really interesting in terms of vocabulary. You might get like interesting vocab words that come from sort of like how Latin and English just aren't quite the same. So I always really enjoy French literature for that reason. And then we have The Amputated Memory by a Cameroonian author named Where We're Liking. Okay, this one's kind of a brick, but it just it just kind of looks really good. It's got an award on the front, winner of the Noma Award for Publishing in Africa. It was stood the test of time in this library system as well. Its translation was published in 2007. I probably won't start this one right away. I'll probably try to conquer more of the pile first, but I'm excited to read this one. And then we have the last two. So remember, the librarian picked them for me, which is okay. But the last two are anthologies, and I'm not sure I'm going to read them. I might hold on to them for a while to see, like, if it's my only option to read something by that author, I will do that. But I really kind of want to find a whole book. I'm pretty sure it's possible, I just have to try really hard. Anyway, these two are anthologies. This one is Under African Skies, Modern Stories, and this one is Gods and Soldiers. Under African Skies was published in 1997, so modern by its own terms, I guess. I'm sure it was modern at the time. Gods and Soldiers was published in 2009, so also not really recent. Interesting things about these anthologies. This one has 26 stories, this one has 30 stories, they each only represent 17 countries. So I feel like even these anthologies are kind of proving my point that when we think Africa, we don't really think all of Africa. We think of places that we've already heard of. In a weird way, like Chenua Achebe made it a little bit easier for every other Nigerian writer to get some recognition in the West. Probably true for some South African writers as well. Also, interestingly, this book counts Bessie Head as South African, which I get. Bessie Head was born in South Africa, but I think that her career took place in Botswana and she transferred her residency, her nationality to Botswana, and I think she claims Botswana for herself, and so that's why I'm including her as a Botswanan author. Another interesting thing about between the two of them, they each both have a story by Cheno Achebe and they both have a story by Narudin Farah. And there were about seven other authors that I now recognize. So I guess looking at these lists and looking at, at authors from different countries, I've, I've come to recognize some people that maybe are considered part of an African literature canon, which, is kind of cool. Still, I would like to see more diversity from anthologies. Maybe I'll try and hunt down like a, a really modern anthology and see if I find something different. Just thinking about 1997, 2009, so you know, 10 years ago, 25 years ago, Africa was smaller in our minds than it in fact is. So anyway, that's just some books and some titles. I will try to read most of these, but I'm not above DNFing if I can find something else from that country, like I have already failed on one. Unfortunately, because my brain just wasn't up to reading in a Chicago winter, I didn't take advantage of all the books and that public library system that I should have. And of course, I'm as far behind as I am. Fortunately, I was able to get a NetGalley ARC, 
of a book that is coming out in August that everyone should read. That book is The Eternal Audience of One and I will do a review. I also found at least one in the audiobook overdrive system that is available right now. There's another book whose sequel just came out and so both of them are available in overdrive as ebooks and audiobooks but I'm like I got seven weeks before it might be available for me in that library system. I'll get there eventually. It's kind of nice to have a couple that are part of my audiobooks because you know I'm always listening to one or two audiobooks a week. That's what's going on with the African Author Challenge. I will have some more coming out very soon because I have finished some books and I want to talk not only about the books but the countries but I know that that editing process is going to take me kind of a chunk of time. So I wanted to get something going just right away. And the book review of The Eternal Audience of One. If you are enjoying the African Author Challenge or any of my other comment, please like, comment, and subscribe. No, really, go ahead and comment, even if you just say like, woohoo, or good books. It really does help out the channel to get some comments out there that YouTube and the algorithm beast know that you care. I think that's all I got today. See ya. So I live in the South again and my hair loves it. Believe it or not, this is 10 minutes after pulling it out of a braid and there's no evidence that it was put up. It's not really that hot. I guess at 98% humidity, my hair actually doesn't hold a curl. Strange.